what lovely words begin our worship this week. Words that recognise the love of God is not only in our hearts, but also surrounds us, no matter what our circumstances. Welcome to Together in Worship. Our theme this week isn't so much the storms of life that might roar without us, but more about the one who shares our boat with us. For the story this week is that very familiar one of Jesus stilling the storm. Our Bible stories are so familiar to us we could almost recite them, and yet we can always find something inspiring as we read them again. Perhaps this week we can be inspired to be strong in our faith, to have courage and to stand up for Jesus. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army he shall lead, till every foe is vanquished and Christ is Lord indeed. <laughs> There's a phrase in that song that seems strange in these days of equality. Ye that are men now serve him. Does that mean only men can worship? No, they're actually the words of Pharaoh in Exodus chapter 10, when Moses demanded that all the Israelites should be allowed to go and serve God. And Pharaoh said, only the men may go and serve the Lord. Now that wasn't acceptable to God, and so he sent the plague on the Egyptians. It means that even if we feel weakened, when we haven't got all our strength, whether in numbers or in ability, even when we are prevented from serving God together, even the unnumbered foes will not withstand us. That's the message for today. Whatever life brings, God is always greater. He makes strength out of weakness. Let's give thanks to him that the weak can be strong.
Here is a prayer based on Psalm 107. Heavenly Father, we are filled with thankfulness for your steadfast love endures forever. We have seen your love expressed in the lives of your chosen people in the scriptures and we have experienced your steadfast love in our own lives. Even though they sinned when they repented, you saved them from distress. Likewise, Father, we remember how you have forgiven us when we have returned to you in faith, repentance and obedience. As we gather together today to give thanks for your strong and unfailing love, help us share the good news of your salvation with others so they too can have their thirst quenched and their hunger taken away. In our joy, hear us as we pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Today is Father's Day, and just for a few moments we want to focus on our fathers, on those who are father figures to us. We want to think of those fathers who've gone to heaven, and also pray for fathers everywhere, as they share the responsibility and privilege of being parents to their own children. In our prayers we want to uphold the sanctity of family life, as fathers and mothers, sometimes on their own, care for children entrusted to them, as gifts from God. And so we pray together. God our Father, we give you thanks and praise for fathers, young and old. We pray for young fathers newly embracing their vocation. May they find courage and perseverance to balance work, family and faith in joy and sacrifice. We pray for fathers around the world whose children are lost or suffering. May they know that the God of compassion walks with them in their sorrow. We pray for men who are not fathers, but still mentor and guide us with fatherly love and advice. We remember fathers, grandfathers and great-grandfathers who are no longer with us, but who live forever in our memory and nourish us with their love. Amen. Jesus calms the storm. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat it, so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Amen. <laughs>
confidence song with its imagery of boats at anchor, firmly secure against the storms, reminds us of another hymn written as the result of a storm. Many know the words of the song, It is well with my soul. That was written after the author lost his family in a terrible storm at sea. Horatio Spafford's heartfelt words really do display a faith that shines through tragedy and is an encouragement to us all. Here's Sylvie Palladino and the Melbourne Staff Band with a song we've featured before on Together in Worship, It Is Well With My Soul.
I've only ever been in a storm at sea twice. The first time was an overnight ferry from Belfast to Liverpool and our small cabin was below the waterline. It had no porthole and I literally felt like I was trying to sleep in a lift. The second occasion was a Sea France ferry from Calais and we sat in a large lounge and we heard the dishes crashing in the galley. It got so bad I lay on the floor. It was not pleasant. Well, I imagine that sailors, or fishermen indeed, who spend most of their life in ships and boats in all kinds of weathers, will be far more experienced in rough weather than your average family coming back from a camping holiday in France. So here's a question I've often asked myself when I've read or heard the story of the stilling of the storm. Just how big was this storm? How great must it have been that it scared the experienced fishermen who knew Galilee well? and made them think they were going to die. It only adds to the question when you picture Jesus sound asleep in the back on a cushion of all things, while the frightened fishermen scream over the wind, don't you care if we drown? You know the story, you know the outcome. You know the question at the end. Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. How many of us as children thrilled to the dramatic stories of the walls of Jericho or Noah's flood or David and Goliath. We loved the dangerous crossing of the Red Sea and Jonah swallowed whole by whatever fish was able to do that. But what does it all mean? What did it mean to the plan of salvation? What did it mean to the participants? And especially, what does it mean to us in June of 2021? I think the bottom line is that all of these stories are designed to tell us more about God than they do about the actual characters. In fact, if we see them just as wonderful stories, we run the risk of turning them into mythology like the Greek legends or the Arabian Nights. In fact, this is history that points to God. And these events tell us of uh, real men and give us a real lesson of their time. And they teach that same lesson to us. Here is God. Here is God who is present, powerful, purposeful. And in the battles, the dead ends, the storms of life, he doesn't just come to us. He doesn't just sit with us or give us peace in our hearts. I'm going to suggest that God, in effect, stands up to his full height and then he demands a response. Let's go back to that story. There's a storm. Jesus stays asleep, but the disciples start bailing. Then they start shouting. And while Jesus is sleeping, they start screaming. Jesus wakes up and in that dramatic gesture that we can all picture in our minds, he raises his arms into the wind. He shouts at the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. Wonderful stuff. And how easy would it be to see this just as a life-saving miracle? I don't actually believe the ship was going down. That's why Jesus was asleep. I don't see this as just a miracle. If you can just see it as a miracle. Yes, it was miraculous, but I think this had more to do with the disciples than it did with the wind and the waves. Notice what Jesus said. Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? He means faith in him. He's hinting that they still don't realise who he is. And that's shown by their question. Who is this? Even the wind and waves obey him. I believe this miracle is for one thing. It's to show the disciples more of Jesus. To show them who he is and then to challenge them. This is a miracle story, but it's more than that. This is a gospel story. And Mark tells us that his book is the gospel. It's the good news about Jesus. Everything he writes is the good news of Jesus. And that includes this story. You cannot read the story of the stilling of the storm without wondering, who is this? Well, the answer is that he is good news. This is God who does something. A God who stands in the boat and with a man's strong voice roars at the elements. But although this is a miracle, let's not see this as therapy. 
I want to suggest today, coincidentally on Father's Day, that this story is challenging the idea that faith is all about being comforted, that faith is all about being helped, uh, about receiving peace. It's actually about being strong. Now, does that sound odd to you? I'm suggesting that the stilling of the storm is a moment when Jesus is not there to hold the hands of the disciples. He's there to challenge them to stand up and demonstrate some faith at long last. I hear critics of the Christian faith who say it's just a crutch for the weak, and I get that. There are times when I need all the support I can get. I need a crutch when I need help. But the Christian faith, the gift of the Holy Spirit indeed, is all about displaying faith, exercising faith, using faith with strength and confidence and boldness. And when Jesus stood in the bow of that fishing boat, standing to his full height and commanding the waves, he was demonstrating the kind of faith he wants to see in us. Faith that stands, faith that commands, faith that declares and takes authority. And seeing their fear, seeing our fear, he says to us, do you still have no faith? There's an interesting detail in the story that I'd like to mention. It's verse 36. Leaving the crowd behind, they, the disciples, took him along, just as he was in the boat. Just as he was. We need to accept Jesus just as he is. He is never going to change. He's one of us, but the intention is that we become like him. And that ultimately means in the quality of of our faith. Yes, he will come and sit with us. He will comfort us. But I believe there are times when he says to us, where's your faith? Use your faith. Draw upon the Spirit's power in illness, in sorrow, in temptation, in hardship, in doubt. If you have ever read the book of Job, you'll have read the story of a man who loved God. He had a trusting faith in God, even though everything was taken away from him. He really did inhabit the storms of life. His friends tried to comfort him, and he said words like, Oh, how I long for the days when God watched over me, when God's intimate friendship blessed my house. Oh, that I had someone to hear me. And then in chapter 38 of Job, we read, Then the Lord answered Job out of the storm. He said, who is this that darkens my counsel with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall answer me. I get the impression here that God is talking to Job in a similar voice to Jesus who said, do you still have no faith? Brace yourself like a man. Face up to the truth. Exercise some faith. And for the whole of chapters 38, 39 and 40, God says nothing but to ask Job who he thinks laid the earth's foundations. Who placed the stars in the heavens? Who feeds the lions and the ravens? Who is it cares for the whole of creation? God is standing tall and showing his might to Job, not to belittle him as a man, not to minimise his circumstances, but to give him an inspiring vision of God who can work wonders, a God who is greater than our storms. And just the same, Jesus stills the storm and questions the faith of those fishermen, not to mock them, not to pretend that the storm wasn't real, but to encourage them also to stand and to believe and to use a robust faith in him, to overcome, not to cower, to be victorious, not a victim. This is the faith that God gives and calls us to use. When you see the clouds, when the wind takes away your breath, when the waves threaten to overwhelm, what is Jesus doing? He is standing and he invites us to recognise his majesty and to use our faith in him to stand up, to stand up for Jesus and stand in his strength alone. And whatever happens, we will always be conquerors through him who loves us.
pray together. God of calm and of might, help us to trust in you. Your power stills the storms and overcomes giants. Help us to recognise your strong presence in our every need. We know that you are with us. We remember your promise to be with us everywhere. Lord, let us not be surprised at your presence or doubtful of your power. We joyfully tell of your wonders. We confidently sing your praises. But our joy and confidence is founded on your power. Help us never to be so lacking in confidence that we fail to use our faith. Help us today to be still, to know that you are God and to stand victorious in your name. Amen. Thank you for joining with us once again in Together in Worship and we share our benediction together. Let nothing disturb thee, nothing affright thee, all things are passing, God never changeth. Patient endurance attaineth to all things, who God possesseth in nothing is wanting, alone God sufficeth. Amen. <laughs>